Hey, what's going on everyone? This is our reviews back with another video and today we're talking about the latest iOS 16.3 update, which is beta 2 and we have some more new features that have been discovered on this update. We're going to talk more about this update and everything you need to know regarding battery life, performance and all that stuff and of course the possible release date for the public of iOS 16.3. We're also talking about iOS 17 which of course is months away from being released on its first beta but yet we have some reports regarding this update and it's actually not looking that good. First of all, let's take a look at some more new changes that we have found on iOS 16.3 beta 2. And the first one has to do with books. So if you go on the books app, we have a much needed change. So when you go to edit your font, you will now have the option to choose the original from the list here. Now, when you choose a new font, you won't have this option on previous iOS versions. You will have to actually reset it with a button at the bottom, which would reset not only the font, but everything else as well. Now you will have the option right there to quickly switch to the original font of the books app. There is a new change on the shortcuts app as well. So now when you're creating a shortcut on the shortcuts app, you will have variables of course, but now you will have the option to select them from a list. So if I tap in this case, when I'm creating this shortcut, if I tap on group here, I will see the list right here. Of course, the list will be different based on what shortcut action you're adding, but you will see a total list here of everything you can add there. And of course, you can go ahead and select them directly from here, which is more convenient. And of course, it allows you to quickly just choose any variable you want. New to iOS 16.3, basically not new, but a, just like a feature that has made a comeback is the ability to use third party apps for two factor authentication. Now this had been on iOS before, even though in my opinion, it never worked actually as it should, but it has made a comeback with iOS 16.3 beta two. Now you can use third party apps for two factor authentication. I didn't try this feature myself, Hopefully it works as it should because as I said, when it was on iOS previously, it actually didn't work that good. There's a new feature that has been released on the Maps app as well. Now this feature will show you the available parking spots. Of course, for selected locations, hopefully it will be expanded to more cities and more states really, really soon. But in this case here in New York, if I go like to a place right there, I can tap on more and you can see right there it says loading, but in a few seconds here, it will load me the parking. So you will have parking options there. So this is a really, really great feature. And you can see if I tap here, it will go to spot hero. And right here, you will see everything, of course, all like the different parking spots that you have in that area or that location that you have selected. This is a great, great feature to have on iOS. Of course, if you live on a big city and you have this feature available, it will be a lifesaver. Another feature that Apple has recently released, and this is a server based feature. So everyone will get it, not just iOS 16.3 users is the new rewards for kickboxing on the fitness app. So if you're a kickboxer or you just train kickboxing, you will now have the new option here for the new rewards on the fitness app. As you probably know, on the wallet app, you have the option to add the driver's license or state ID. But if you go here, you can see that there are only three options currently for state ID or driver's license. But iOS 16.3 will most likely add another one. It will be California. According to authorities, this is coming pretty soon on iOS. And in my opinion, it should come with the release of iOS 16.3. Whether we will have to wait for a next beta or for the public release to see this feature, this is actually coming very, very soon on iOS. So if you live in California, you will have the ability to add your driver's license or state ID on the wallet app iOS 16.3 will also fix a few bugs and one of them, which is known to iOS 16.3 users are the astronomy wallpapers that basically wouldn't animate when you go from the lock screen to the home screen with the music playing. So when you have the full screen album art on the lock screen and you go to your home screen, it wouldn't actually animate your wallpaper. So now that has been fixed with iOS 16.3. There is another fix for iOS 16.3 on the music app. So basically the music app would play the clean version of a song instead of the explicit version, no matter which one you choose. So that again has been fixed with the newest iOS 16.3 beta 2 update. 
Now that we're done with the new features and changes of iOS 16.3 Beta 2, let's take a look at battery and performance of this update. So first of all, taking a look at the battery right here, we have the last few days, so you can see what we have here with about maybe 75% battery right there. We have eight hours on screen, eight hours and 15 minutes. Right here, we have six hours, 52 minutes with about like 90% 90, 90 battery maybe. And we have like different here performances, but that of course is always based on what you're doing on your iPhone, whether you're using cellular or using Wi-Fi to connect to the internet. So it will be different of course, on, on different days but it's actually not that bad in my opinion the battery life even though we are still on beta it's the second beta it's quite good and of course it will be maybe like one or two percent better than i was 16.2 but you cannot expect actually a huge change when it comes to battery life but didn't see any like drains or something like that the battery life is actually quite stable and it's performing in my opinion really good moving on to the performance here we have geekbench and we have the latest test here for iOS 16.3 so here we have the latest one from today let's compare this to like right here which is this is beta 1 I believe it was and we have here the single core score of 1881 while we have here the multi the single core score of 1875 so a slight decrease there but taking a look at the multi-core score 5556 while we have here 5535 again a slight decrease there but that is just a slight decrease that of course doesn't doesn't have a big impact and that of course will change if you do another test probably it will be a bit better or a bit worse because the circumstances are not always the same that is based on what your device is doing at the moment whether the cpu is hot or not but again the performance seems to be quite stable and overall Using the iPhone on daily basis with iOS 16.3, I didn't notice any like major bugs, glitches or something like that. And before we move on and talk about iOS 17, let's quickly talk about the next beta and the public release of iOS 16. Now, even though this beta seems to be far away from a public release because it has a build number that ends with an I, I believe that we might not see that many betas of this software. So we will probably get a new beta this week and heading on into the next week, I would expect Apple to actually release the RC version. And I would put the actual release date to the public of iOS 16.3 somewhere around the first or the second week of February. I believe these to be the dates, maybe February 7th or maybe even 14th should be the dates when Apple releases iOS 16.3 to the public. Let's move on and now talk about iOS 17. We have some bad news. So Apple is actually working on the AR VR headset, which is expected to be released this year, maybe as early as spring. And according to Mark Grumman, this will have an impact on iOS 17. Now, Mark Grumman is a very trusted source when it comes to Apple related stuff. And right here is what he says on his latest report. So Apple again is releasing their AR VR headset and they are also working on a software for that. So of course it needs an operating system which will be called XROS. And all the most of the resources, resources will be focused on that. So according to him, this will have an impact on iOS 17 and it should have less features, less big features and changes than anticipated at the beginning. So here we have the report from Mark Grumman. I will leave the complete report right down below in the, in the link on the description if you wanna check it out. So according to him, this basically some new features that are expected to come to iOS 17 and iPadOS 17 will not make it. The software code, code name Dawn may have fewer major changes than originally planned. This will have, of course, a big impact on iOS 17, even though it has been years since we have been waiting for maybe a redesign of iOS that is likely not going to happen according to this report. We still hope it will, but we will have to wait for WWDC 2023 to see if that will turn out to be true or not. But again, Apple will probably focus a lot on their XROS operating system that again will have an impact on iOS 17, iPadOS 17, as well as macOS 14, which is of course 
very bad news but hopefully we will get something new on ios 17 maybe a redesign of some parts of the ui like the control center something like that but let's wait and see what happens so that is it for this video guys i hope you guys enjoyed the video and all the informations on this video if you find that useful make sure you subscribe for more videos like this leave a like if you enjoyed this one and i will see you guys on the next video